were very scared that the Reagan administration was going to put people with AIDS in internment camps. And I think that we came close to that in this country. How deeply are Americans worried about AIDS? A Los Angeles Times poll found that 50% of Americans favor quarantine for AIDS victims. Tell me about the documentary, what the oral oh, history, what was the Well, um, in 2001, I was in LA, and I was, it was the 20th anniversary of AIDS, I guess. And NPR was doing some programming, and the person said, at first America had trouble with people with AIDS, but then they came around. And I like almost crashed the car. <laughs> I was like, that's not what happened. <laughs> and I was like, you know, that's what they always do. Like, reality, a despised group of people with no rights join together and force the country to change against its will, thereby saving each other's lives. Now they're going to naturalize that into just, you know, the, be the benevolence of the dominant group that recognized and allowed this progress narrative to unfold. And I was like, we all, we cannot let that happen. So I called my collaborator, Jim Hubbard. We had started the Mix Festival, an experimental film festival. It's now 25 years old. And we was like, we have to do something about this. So we started the ACT UP Oral History Project. It started very innocently, as all these things always do. And the two of us together, uh, in the last 10 years, have interviewed 128 surviving members of ACT UP New York. We have a website. You can download the transcripts for free. 80,000 people have. And we've been collecting archival footage. And we ended up collecting 2,000 hours of archival footage, which we digitized. And then Jim decided to make a feature film on the history of ACT UP. So we've been working on this film for 10 years. It's 90 minutes, and um, you know, I, it has some footage that even people are from our generation have never seen, but certainly younger people have never seen. I watched some of the footage. I, I cried. It was amazing to, to be taken back to that time and to feel shame for not having been more involved mm. personally. You know, just it, it's you know for for a lot of gays like myself who don't you know weren't sort of motivated to. Uh, protest, not, at least not until I felt comfortable being queer. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's amazing that so much was going on that people just couldn't sit still. Do you feel like um, you know, that some of that's been lost in the, the younger generation? Now that you're compiling, that, that this, compiling this oral history, do you feel like, wow, it's, the times really have changed? Or, you know, looking back on it, does it, does it seem as... Uh, you know, does it seem that, that it was for a reason, that it's paid off? I mean, ACT UP was the last effective social movement in the United States. It's looking at the, actually at the strategies and tactics of a movement like ACT UP that helps us be more effective with what we're doing now. So it's just like essential information. You know, before, the image of people with AIDS in the media used to be the skeletal, covered in Carposi's sarcoma, lying in bed person, right? And the people with AIDS movement transformed that. So then you had people, instead of dying of AIDS, people living with AIDS who were fighting for their lives. And this kind of, you know, energetic, committed, focused activist became the media image of who, was who had AIDS. And that's when the people who are at the center of the battle take control of the representation. <laughs>